so for your lady. Oh, sorry. Oh, I didn't know you were there. It scared me half to death. I didn't expect you to be in this early. No, we're a bit behind on pickups. So... Where's Irene? Well, the front door was open when I got here, so she can't be far away. Want that cleaned? Oh, yes. And I need to pick up the dress I left here last week. I wasn't expecting you in till this evening. Had some extra time this morning. Do you have any idea how long Irene will be? No. Nope. You know what she's like. She won't leave this place in my hands for longer than she has to. <laughs> This is Donna Lobo, Caroline Milovich. Uh, Donna is the shop assistant here, Caroline, a customer. They found the body. Irene O'Leary, she's a widow, ran and owned this establishment. Lord Imogen, she's all yours. Is it all right to touch that plastic? Uh, yes, but uh, nothing else for now, thanks. Well, I've got some indistinct prints from the uh, <coughs> front door and the counter. I'll, I'll, I'll dust the rack and the coat hanger once we get the body down. Any signs of forced entry? No. Uh, the shop assistant Donna said that the front door was unlocked when she arrived this morning. The back door is still locked. Anything missing? The cash register is empty. Normally it holds a float of $100. You yeah, know, look, I've uh, got some very good prints from the register. Uh, Miss Lobo here has agreed to provide a fingerprints for elimination. They hang her up like that. It's a weird thing to do, isn't it? Yes, just, just try not to contaminate the crime scene if we can. Thank you, Detective. Sorry, Fisk. Seems like a lot of trouble to go to for $100, doesn't it? And there's more to this than a simple case of robbery gone wrong. Mm. I wish he was more of a tweed man, Lance. Mm. I just can't believe this. What time did you get in this morning, Donna? About 7.30. Right, and, and when you arrived, you said that the front door was unlocked? Yeah. And when you came in, there was no sign of Mrs O'Leary? No. But that wasn't unusual. Mrs O'Leary always gets in earlier than I do, and, well, she just potters around and gets herself a takeaway coffee. She's... She was a very hard worker. When you arrived, did you see anybody leaving, anything like that? Was there anyone outside? Well, just the usual people opening up their businesses for the day, that sort of thing. Donna, do you know if, um, if Mrs O'Leary had any enemies? Uh, did she ever get any strange phone calls or letters, anything like that? Not that I know of. Mrs O'Leary was a nice old duck. Well, a bit hard to work for, but well, she was a perfectionist, you know. Mm -hmm. When did you last see her alive? Yesterday afternoon. I left at five, my usual time, and... She was still here then. Right, and she locked the door when you left? No, I don't think so. No. Well, she always left later. Said you can never tell when there's going to be a last-minute customer dropping in. You no, know, was she expecting someone? Did she make an appointment? Irene O'Leary was a wonderful woman. She went to church every week and... Mm. You've got to find whoever did this to her. Sorry, just to sit down. Be 
victim's bag, put in full view under the counter. Not much cash, but credit cards. Well, if robbery was the motive, then the killer would have taken that with him, wouldn't he? Excuse me. Yeah. Oh. I guess to she's been dead at least 12 hours. OK. Uh, and the plastic bag over the head, is that the cause? More than likely. Suffocation leading to asphyxia. OK. It's not the easiest way to kill someone. Hmm. So why do it like that? Yeah. OK, let's check out her house, huh? Hello, boys. Oh, it's stuffed. <laughs> Maybe bad taste is our motive. What do you think? It's the accounts from the dry cleaning business. Our victim was very thorough. Tess, list of names, customers moving in. Did you see this? Yeah. Five names highlighted. Tess, look at this commode. This is a beautiful piece. This is original framework. What well, that means? What's that? The five names highlighted. Oh, well, it could be anything, couldn't it? Best customers, bad debts, anything. Caroline Milovich is here. The woman who was with the shop assistant when the body was found. Uh, Tessa. Here we go. And I'll tell you why. I'm sure you will. I knew this guy once who owned his own business, right? Yeah. He only kept a record of some of his cash sales, the rest he pocketed for himself. He didn't put the money in the bank because the tax department would catch him sooner or later. Let me guess, he kept it under his mattress. No. In his socks. In his running shoes. <laughs> no one in their right mind would go anywhere near them. And let's face it, how many people are going to go looking through an old lady's commode? Point. Right, so what, is the story finished or halfway through? Or? Perfect hiding place, excuse me. So, anything else? Some fingerprints? Yes, uh, shop assistants and the victims, which is hardly surprising given they work there. What about fibres? What in dry cleaners? You tantamount to searching for dog hairs in a boarding kennel. Unlike you to give up so easily, Chris. Hi. Hey. Well, um... Tootsie's ready. You see the pinpoint hemorrhages in the eyelids? Yeah. Couple that with a blueness in the lips, ears and fingernails and you have almost a textbook case of asphyxia. But the, the plastic bag that was used to suffocate her was pretty flimsy, easily torn in a struggle. Oh, she's pretty tiny. I can't see her putting out much of a fight. Her arms were restrained. Gee, there's, there's a lot of bruising there. I'd say a killer got the victim on the ground, possibly sat on her chest, immobilising her arms by kneeling on them. Awful way to die. Yeah, I can think of better ways to go. Please, identify yourself. I wasn't stealing, I'd never steal. What were you doing at the house, Mrs. Milovich? You see, it's my wedding anniversary. I had to get something important. My husband doesn't have to know about this, does he? He mustn't know. Mrs. Milovich, you're under arrest. You've been charged with break and enter. A letter. I was looking for a letter. What sort of letter? A love letter. I... I had an affair. My husband doesn't know. It was only the one time, I swear it was. But the man just wouldn't let it go. I've never done anything like that before. I've never even thought about it. You've got to believe me. How did Irene O'Leary get hold of this letter? She found it in a coat I'd put it in for dry cleaning. And you thought the letter would be at Irene's house? 
I thought she was my friend, but... Go on. But she called me a harlot. Said I needed to be taught a lesson about loyalty. About the meaning of my marriage vows. That she keep the letter. Make sure I did the right thing. Was she blackmailing you? I paid her $50 a week. Every Tuesday night. I've been paying for months. So what were you doing at the dry cleaners this morning? I told you today is my wedding anniversary. My husband has dinner arranged. I wanted to pay this morning instead of this evening. This is going to break his heart. Maybe she's doing it to everyone on the list. Well, it's possible. Five names highlighted in the victim's notebook and we know that one is definitely a black male victim. You think she's blackmailing all of them? She's a little old lady. Little old lady? I've known a little old lady. Slit you open, have your heart out on a slice of toast before you could say what's for breakfast. OK, get on to it first thing in the morning, see what you can come up with. Not that I think any of them are going to talk. Unless you twist a few arms. Sophie Lifsug. Sophie, I'm Detective Vance. We're investigating the murder of Irene O'Leary. Yes? Uh, your name was found on a list at the victim's house. Please, not here. If my dad... Are you being blackmailed, Sophie? This is important. Yes, yes, I was. Now, please, I'll meet you later. Just tell me where. OK, can you come down to homicide this afternoon? Yes, I'll be there, I promise. Now, please go. and Firth, the accountant's around the corner picking up his car at the mechanics. How'd you go? She was terrified her father would see her talking to me. She'll come in later. Right. What about the blackmail? Yeah, well, she didn't say why, but we're definitely on the right track. Oh, okay. Jason Hand, he's another one on our list. Nothing like killing two birds with one stone. You take the mechanic, I'll take the accountant. Mm -hmm. Hey, Winton Firth. I'm Winton Firth. I'm Detective Hayden from Homicide. I'll ask you a few questions, sir. Yeah, thanks. All right. Blackmail. That woman must have been about 112 years old. Your name appeared on a list that the victim had, and at least two other people on that list of blackmail by us. Look, I only used that dry cleaners once, you know. I had this free voucher thing. I knew it. I shot. Listen, I'm really sorry I can't be more help, you know. It's just we're really busy and every cent counts these days, you know? Sure. Sure. Thanks for the time. Detective, have you get any idea on who killed her? Investigations are continuing, Mr Hand. No, I'll, I'll happily make a statement. I'm oh, good. I just wish you hadn't gone to my work first. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's the only address we had. Yeah. Believe me, I don't want my boss asking any more questions. <laughs> He's been looking for an excuse to get rid of me for ages. Yeah. Listen, give me half an hour. Yeah, sure. No problem. Great. Thank you. Do you even get to blackmail? Yeah. I haven't got any details. He's nervous like the rest. Mm, I heard. How'd you go? Dead end. So as he knows nothing about blackmail. You convinced? Not yet. Mm -hmm. All right, Edward Fry. Huh? You're Edward Fry? Have I done something wrong? How old are you? Fourteen. OK, look, I want to ask you some questions about Irene O'Leary, the lady who runs the local dry cleaners. She's dead, isn't she? I saw the police cars there yesterday morning. Do you know her? We found you a name on a list at her house. You won't tell the school, will you? Promise. You have to promise. She seemed really gentle. Still, you never can tell, eh? How did Irene O'Leary find out that you were embezzling money from your employer? Well, that's just it. I wasn't. Well, why did she think that you were? Look, I've been promised a pay rise for over a year. And when it didn't come, I thought maybe I could do a bit of work on the side, you know. I'd pocket the money myself instead of putting it through the firm. Right, and is that what you did? No. 
Now, I had a list of clients in a notebook, but they were the ones I was thinking about approaching. I've only ever cheated once in my entire life. Uh -huh. Mass. I hate mass. Uh -huh. And I was scared if I failed again, they'd kick me out. Right. And Irene O'Leary found out about it. I was so stupid. She knew I had my finals on, and I left the answers that I'd written out for the exam in my blazer pocket. She said I had to pay for my dishonesty, and that if a man didn't have his word, then he had nothing. Ah, right, and Irene O'Leary found your notebook, did she? Yeah. I mean, I had it all worked out in the book, how I was going to do it, keep it out of the office, etc. I mean, any fool could have worked out what the notes meant. How were the payments to Mrs O'Leary organised? Ah, uh, Wednesdays. Every Wednesday at 5.30, I'll give her $50. It's a long time to be paying her when you hadn't done anything wrong. <sighs> but that was my punishment for even thinking about it. You know, Irene O'Leary said... Be sure that your sin will find you out. And she threatened to tell the school that you cheated on an exam, huh? But I don't care about the school so much. The headmaster would tell my grandfather. And if he found out, well, you don't know my grandfather. Okay, so you started to pay Mrs O'Leary. When? Every Monday. I gave her $40. Which only left me $10 a week out of my allowance. Where were you on Monday night, Mr Firth? At home. I don't go out much these days, I can't afford it. You think I killed her? Did you? No. <laughs> God, no. I couldn't kill anyone. I thought about it, though. You went to the dry cleaners on Monday afternoon to pay? 5.30. That was my time. Edward, Irene O'Leary was murdered on Monday night. Well, she was okay when I left there. I swear. I thought she was such a nice lady. Good. Thanks for your time. We'll, um, we'll be in touch again if we need to know anything more. We know where to call you. Oh, right, thanks. Listen, um, no one else needs to know about this today. I mean, my boss doesn't need to be told or anything. No, not at this stage. Oh, thanks. Edward Fry, exam cheat. Caroline Milovich, adultery. Winton Firth. Embezzlement. Ah, uh, he denies the embezzlement, but it is why she was back now. Sad, pathetic little list. Edward Fry is a teenager, Malcolm. He's 14 years old. 14? Yeah. Who's next? Toddlers cheating at Tiddlywink. Gets worse. He admits to being at the dry cleaners on Monday at 5.30. Well, that places him at the scene the time the murder occurred, but is he capable? Well, he's a big kid physically. Good athlete. And these? Uh, so the Mifsud's coming in this afternoon. Jason Hound, the mechanic, denies all knowledge of that now. Well, perhaps uh, he's hesitant to admit to some little sin that he may have committed. Mm -hmm. Or it's possible that you know, she was planning to blackmail him and died before she set it in motion. Which begs the question, did he know about the plan or not? If he did, he's got as much motive as everyone else on the list. Uh, he has more. Jason Hand has a conviction for possession of and conspiracy to supply drugs. He is currently on parole. Bye. Interesting he chose today to close up early. Maybe it was something you said. <laughs> I'll check the back. Mr. Hand! I haven't done anything wrong, okay? Then perhaps you can help us with our inquiries, sir. All right? Come on. Not travelling first class, Mr Hand? Didn't realise taking a holiday was a crime these days. <laughs> well, it depends on why you've decided to take it, doesn't it? You have a criminal record, Mr Hand. So? Is that why you denied the blackmail? You didn't want police attention? You're currently on parole, sir. Does your parole officer know about these holiday plans of yours? Sit down, Mr Hand. It was just a bit of dope in my jacket pocket. Uh -huh. Look, I am really sorry the old cow's dead, but 
I had nothing to do with it, okay? She found cannabis in the clothes you put in for dry cleaning. Yeah, last week. It was just a bit of stuff that had fallen out of a joint. She must have gone through my jacket with a magnifying glass. What day exactly? Last Tuesday. I've never been in the damn place before. A customer gives me a voucher and I think, hey, why not? Get my jacket clean, something for nothing, right? <laughs> Should've known better. You got that right. You made a blackmail payment yet? Last Thursday, 50 bucks. What time? 5.30. I tried to change it to another time, to another day. I'm still trading on Thursday nights, but she wouldn't have a bar of it. She said it was the only time available. Where were you on Monday night, 5.30 and 7? I was at the garage. I lived there. Closed up about 6, watched some TV. Anyone with you? No, I was alone. OK. Good. Thanks for your time. That's it. Unless there's something else you want to tell us. What do you think? I think he's nervous. And no more than any of the others. My father, well, he really loves me, you know, but if he saw us talking this morning, he would have wanted to know what we were talking about. And if he found out about Mrs O'Leary, he'd want to know about my boyfriend. And... Oh, Sophie, can you tell us how, how the blackmail started? My dad doesn't like me going out with boys. I have to sneak out. There was this party. I really wanted to go, but I had nothing to wear. So I took my mother's satin blouse. It was white, and... I was dancing with this boy, well, a man really, and I spilt red wine on it. Dad would have killed me if he found out. So you took the blouse in to be dry cleaned? I told Mrs O'Leary what had happened and how important it was that she get the stain out. Go on. She wanted to tell my father. I told her what had happened if she did, but she didn't seem to care. She just didn't care. Honour thy father, she said. How long have you been paying us, I think? Eight months next Friday. She was a horrible woman. That smell. It's the metho and the cleaners they use. It grows on you, doesn't it? Be organized. Understand your customers. Seize opportunity. Sorry. My uncle used to have a dry cleaning business and I'd spend every summer holidays with him and his wife. And if I was very, very good, he'd let me release the steam every afternoon. I would have preferred more pocket money, but hey, say la vie. The, the schoolboy, Edward, you said that he made his blackmail payment on the Monday of the murder at 5.30, $40. Hmm. So where's the money? Well, either the killer took it along with the $100 float. Or Edward's the killer. Edward, what are you doing here? I need to talk to you. Today's paper. What do you make of this? O'Leary's dry cleaners. They're looking for a shop assistant. It's a pretty small operation. Why would they need a second assistant? Someone to replace Donna, maybe. Possibly. We check. And? Apparently the ad was placed by Irene O'Leary on Monday morning. And Monday evening she's murdered. Sorry, Sergeant. See you later. You know that she was blackmailing customers? Can you believe it? One of them was a kid, Edward. He goes to the academy school. But you know something really spooky? 
he was here the night that Irene was killed. What could he have possibly done to warrant blackmail? Cheated on an exam. <laughs> I couldn't believe it when he told me. Oh, he's such a sad kid, you know? Like, his parents just dumped him with this pig of a grandfather. And now this. Miss Lobo, sorry I'm late. Good morning. Hello, detective. Shall we go? Yeah. Um, Caroline and Winter have still got some clothes in the shop, and they're just wondering when they can pick them up. Uh, well, I'm afraid the shop is still a crime scene. It will be for a couple of days, all right? Miss uh -huh. Lobo, please. This is your job being advertised, isn't it, Donna? Yeah? When did Irene O'Leary give you your notice? Monday afternoon. Did she say why you were being fired? Not really. I worked hard. I got on well with the customers. I lasted there longer than any other assistant she'd ever had. See, no one wanted to work for her. She was such an odd... She's always lecturing you about how to live your life and questioning you about where you went on weekends and who you were seen with. <laughs> now I know what that was all about. She just wanted to know if she could get anything on you. When did you find out about the blackmail, Donna? Edward told me last night. He's just a lonely kid, you know. She had no right to go and tear him up like that. On the morning you found Irene O'Leary dead, how'd you get into the store? I told you, when I got there, the front door was unlocked and I just assumed that she was around somewhere. And that wasn't unusual, to find the front door open? No sign of your employer? Mm -mm. No, it wasn't. Well, it wasn't unusual that the front door was unlocked. I guess it was weird that she wasn't there, but I didn't think of that at the time. Did you take the money from the cash register, Donna? <laughs> okay. Okay, I took it. How much? Only the float. A hundred dollars. Are you sure you didn't take money out of her purse? No. No way. Just the money from the till. And it never entered your head that Irene O'Leary would know it was you? Why? When I got there, the door was unlocked and she wasn't around. Anyone could have taken it. I just wanted to teach her a lesson. Okay, so the <clears throat> question still remains, what happened to the $40 that the schoolboy paid the victim on Monday night? Well, there could be a simple explanation for it not being there. Yeah. Irene O'Leary could have used the cash to uh, top up the float, used the cash to pay for a bill. No, I still think it's connected to the death. You need to speak to Edward again. Yeah, all right. We'll need permission to interview him officially. We in contact with the boy's guardian? Yeah, well, his grandfather's in a state on business most of the time, so he's under the guardianship of the academy during the term. Get him in here, then. Right out. Tell me why we're doing this again, Sergeant. Exploring all avenues, Constable. Avenues. Yes, well, if an item of clothing was meant to be picked up on the day of the murder, mm. and it's still here, there is a possibility that it may belong to our killer. Or to someone with a bad memory. Yes, well, that may well be, but nonetheless, it's an avenue of investigation. All right. Yep. Oh, check this out. Go on, 70s job. Constable, could you please concentrate on the job at hand? I know it may okay. seem trivial, Sorry. but it is very All important. Right. This one was due to be picked up last Friday. Hang on, this one was supposed to be collected on the day of the murder. Yes, well, excellent work, Constable. My pleasure. Carry on. Good morning, Detective. I'm John Ison, Edward's fall master. Okay, come this way, please. Now, Edward, you said you paid Irene O'Leary your blackmail money on Monday evening. Are you sure about that? Yes. <laughs> Have you got a, a wallet on you? Why? Can I see it? What are you looking for? Can you turn your pockets out for me, put it on the desk? What time did you go to the dry cleaners on Monday, Edward? 5.30. 5.30. There's $50, Edward. How can that be? You said you paid Irene O'Leary all of your allowance bar $10 on Monday. 
Edward. I went to the dry cleaners, just like I said. She wasn't there when I went inside and I got spooked. What spooked you, Edward? I heard a noise. I thought it might have been the old lady or maybe Donna. But no one came out when I called, so I just left. What made you think of Donna? Was she, um, was she usually there when you went to make your payment? No. Donna's my friend. All right, Edward, that'll do. You can go. I told my grandfather. He's coming back tonight. You promised. The boy is more worried about his grandfather than he is about the murder charge. Yeah. Well, his statement at least helps establish his exact time of death. If he was in the dry cleaners at 5.30, Irene O'Leary was already dead. Or dying. Edward said he heard something. Yeah. Our merchant was there when the boy came in. But he said he didn't see anyone. But the killer could have seen him. Yeah, Edward should be back at school. I'll get under his headmaster, tell him to keep a close eye on him. Do that. One died last week. Yeah, his wife wanted us to take the jacket off to charity, and well, we haven't got around to it. Uh, what about the shirt? According to the docket book, it belongs to Simon Cullen. Do you know him? Yes. Was he a regular customer? Yep, every week. But I haven't seen him around for a while. When was the last time I saw him? Um, I couldn't be too sure. But hang on. He dropped this shirt in to be cleaned last week, on Wednesday. Yeah, so that was the last time I saw him. Right. OK. Good. Thank you. Uh, Donna, you're friendly with Edward Fry, aren't you? Sure, I suppose. Do you have any idea where he is? No. Why isn't he at school? No, he's not. I'm sorry. Can't help. OK, great, thanks. Is Edward busy? Yeah, the local boys have been notified he might be in danger. His grandfather turned up at the school, but no Edward. Hello, Edward. Mr. Khan, was Irene O'Leary threatening you? Yeah, I was being blackmailed by the old bitch. Fifty bucks. Mightn't sound like much, but she had me by the short and curlies. But I got her. Finally, I got her. And how did you get her? Well, when the money ran out, my wife started asking too many questions about where it was all going. Mm -hmm. I confessed that I had an affair. What happened then? Well, I went and I told Irene O'Leary where she could put her blackmail money. And when I got home, my wife had thrown everything I owned onto my front lawn. You ever been in a position, detective, where you think that everything's finally going right? And then suddenly, just... Simon, when did you tell Mrs O'Leary that you weren't going to be paying her any more money? Last Wednesday. And what day were you due to make a payment? I paid her Thursday evenings. I hope she rots in hell, you know, for what she did to me. Where were you on Monday night between five and seven? I was at the hospital having the nip. Nip? Vasectomy. Only way the wife would have me back. A blackmail victim for each day of the week. Irene's key to success, be organised. Understand your customers, seize opportunities. If a market dries up, find another. She put a lot into her rules and regulations. Certainly more elaborate than three garments for $9.95. Any news on the schoolboy yet? Local boys are doing a search. Paid it Thursday evenings. Average. 
Tuesday evening. She gave me notice on Monday afternoon. I meet my parents every Wednesday. She said it was the only time available. If the market dries up, find another. OK, thanks. Still nothing on the boy. It's all about schedules. Who are you calling? Jason Hand, the mechanic. So the dead woman had a system, a blackmail victim for each day of the working week, right? If one market dries up, find another to replace it. Which is how the mechanic ended up on the list she needed to replace Simon Cohen on Thursdays. But Jason Hand didn't find out that he was going to be blackmailed until Tuesday of last week, right? Yes. Now, Irene O'Leary didn't know that Simon Cohen wasn't going to be making his blackmail payments until the next day. So, originally, the mechanic was supposed to replace somebody else. Can you imagine how that person felt? Almost free of blackmail and then finding out it had all gone wrong? 50 kilo bit. So, so, why do we need to see the mechanic again? He's already admitted to being blackmail. Yeah, yeah, but he also mentioned um, a, a free voucher that someone had given him to O'Leary's dry cleaning. Yeah, right. Donna? Oh. Um, you said before that Edward might be in danger. What sort of danger? Do you know where he is? He's at the shop. Jason Hand was meant to replace you on the list. We know that you gave him the voucher to have his jacket cleaned. Well, Irene O'Leary told me it was the only way I'd ever have my life back. So you knew the mechanic was on parole for drug dealing? Yes. I did his accounts. See, he told me he had to have everything done just right, that he couldn't afford to get into any more trouble. But I also knew he still used drugs. I'd seen him smoking a joint. Uh, so you planted drugs in his pocket? Yeah. I mean, it was a calculated risk on my part to use him, but I really didn't have any other choice. You know, that woman talked a lot about righteousness and her desire to teach those of us who'd strayed. But how dare she judge my actions? And what business was it of hers how much money I took from that company? So you, you did embezzle money, Mr. Beth? No. I took exactly what was owed to me, not a cent more. Mr. Firth, can you tell us what happened the day Irene O'Leary told you the deal was off, that Jason Hand would be replacing someone else, not you, on the list? She made a special trip to the office to tell me. She was so smug. She was always smug. So I went home. I thought about what had happened. I asked myself, was I prepared to carry the liability? I decided I wasn't. The liability? That's the first law of accounting, detective. Don't carry a bad debt if there's any way of avoiding it. In layman's terms, I throw good money after bad. So you killed her? If there'd been any other option open to me, I certainly would have taken it. But there wasn't, you see. And I couldn't let that woman do that to me again, could I? I mean, surely you can see the logic in that, detective. So you've never done anything you're ashamed of? Nothing. Oh, come on. Ever. But you don't really expect us to believe that, do you? Well, Imogen, quite frankly, I couldn't care less whether you believed or not. You never ever hid in the bathroom and smoked a cigarette? No. Ever chucked a rock through a window? Or... No. 
You've never told a lie, not even a little white one. Oh, come on, lads. Everybody's told a lie, even if it's to make somebody feel better. Ah, uh, yes, well, Imogen, I'm actually not in the habit of making people feel better. Can't argue with that. Anyway, even if I did have a secret, what makes you think I'd want to share it with you lot? My mother used to say that if you can't trust a friend, who can you trust? <laughs> That's right. Yes, well, with all due respect to your mother, Constable, in my experience, friends are the last people you can trust secrets to. Ah, so you do lie to keep your secrets secret. Big, fat, juicy ones, am I right? <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> Miss Vance, that is something you will never know. <laughs> Come on, this give. As Will Rogers once said, so live that you would not be ashamed to sell the family parrot to the town gossip. You don't have a parrot. Who's Will Rogers? Will Rogers. He's <laughs> Roy's brother. No, 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 he's the commentator. Well, no, Will Rogers, they both rule the West. No, he doesn't.